What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be reviewing probably one of the cheapest guns you'll ever see on the channel, because it's one of the cheapest guns made. This is the High Point 9mm Carbine. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. Thank you in every video, because the channel wouldn't be here without you. Really appreciate you uh, supporting the channel and allowing me to pick up guns like this for review. If you want to be a part of the Patreon squad, all you have to do is go down to the description of the video and click the link and sign up. Also in the description is a link to a local homeless shelter that I like to support named Iowa. Really appreciate it if you go down there and check that out as well. Now, the High Point is a gun that I purchased because I'm looking to do a top five on some really affordable guns and I wanted to run it through some testing as maybe one of the candidates. I keep hearing about it all the time. I keep hearing about how good it is compared to some of the other guns maybe in its class or its price. So I'm kind of interested to try it out. I got this gun for $275 during the crazy craziness that's going on right now of 2020. So uh, it's relatively affordable to say the least, probably the most affordable uh, carbine that I might even consider for home defense. Runs single stack magazines here. I got some magazines online that look super weird. Runs, it, it came with one 10 round single stack magazine that I got some of these uh, clearly put together magazines, but they were the only ones I could find that were above 10 rounds of capacity. These are 20 rounds. So we'll be running those a little bit. Blowback operated nine millimeter carbine with a 16 inch barrel. Does have a Picatinny rail on the bottom and on the uh, barrel there, which I, I don't know if I'd recommend uh, because that usually leads to accuracy issues. Big old front sight post on the front there kind of reminds me a little bit of an AK. Uh, threaded barrel, I think, on it. Yeah, threaded barrel. Uh, one half by 28, I have to assume, so that'd be kind of cool. Maybe we'll throw a suppressor on it. Uh, adjustable iron sights. They're a little low for my uh, for my preference. I usually like a l lower one-third co-witness red dot, that kind of thing, uh, with an adjustable cheek piece and an adjustable length of pull. So overall, it's got a lot of features that I really like. However, the operation system is a little odd. The charging handle feels a little cheesy, uh, and I'm not really sure how to lock the bolt yet. Uh, I haven't done any research. This is a first shots video, so I kind of take what I already knew of the firearm, and then I just go out and shoot it, give me my first impressions, then we do a thousand round review. We'll definitely be doing a thousand round review of this, because I'll be interested to see just how it runs. But overall, I think so far, it could be a good candidate for a budget gun. It looks kind of mean, it looks kind of cool. I know a ton of these have been sold over the years, because they're extremely affordable. Back in my day, when I was a little kid, uh, these were in the area of $100, I remember. And I even had a buddy who had one, never did get to shoot it, but uh, I get to shoot it today. So with further ado, Go check it out. All right, so we're out on our fresh range here. Looks like a little winter wonderland. No footprints to the range yet. It's because I haven't been out there in a few days, and it's been snowing pretty consistently in Iowa the past few days. Why haven't you been out there for the past few days? Because it's cold. Zoms. Double XP weekend, number one. Number two, a little New Year's hangover. Number three, <laughs> I was just snowed in. Sometimes it's nice to take the day off. But anyway, I figured we'd take our weird looking uh, double stack magazine and, or weird looking single stack magazine, I should say, and run that and just see if this PMC bronze will run in this high point carbine. I'm not expecting world renowned reliability, but it would be kind of cool if it would run, especially for $275. So we're at about 85, 80 yards here ish, and uh, we'll just kind of play around and shoot around the target till we hit, kind of figure out our Kentucky windage probably. They're adjustable sights, but I'm probably not going to adjust them because it's cold right now. <laughs> right on the money first time. Nice. Felt a little weak. I can tell you one of the things I've noticed, of course it's winter when we're shooting this, so I would notice this, but I'm wearing thicker gloves and the trigger guard is extremely small. Like I can barely fit my trigger finger in there and when I do reset, I can barely get the gun to reset. And that's because of the thicker gloves. I got a little bit larger hands to begin with. Uh, but the trigger guard is most certainly smaller than average. So I'm doing target transitions on that and I'm shooting two different targets. See if I can speed things up a little bit. I think one of my targets fell over. I don't see the other two on the left anymore. Both of them must have fell over. Ooh. So that time I didn't even uh, get all the way out to reset. The reset's not audible or tactile, so I'm gonna have to play with that a lot. I'm so used to riding reset on 1911s, 2011s, so short. This one's a lot longer, and it's not very noticeable. So uh, every time I think I hit that uh, trigger guard there, I think it's ready to reset, but I gotta push in a little bit further. 
See if we can hit some of the smaller stuff. Oh, we got that 10 inch plate. A little bit low. Got him again. I think we might be out. We are out. Either that or we had a jam. We're out. We ran them all. And it locked open. I didn't even know it had a bolt all open. That's pretty cool. Uh, one of the single stack mags that uh, came with the gun. We'll see how it runs. That trigger's gonna get me. Rapid fire. So obviously one of the downsides of this is gonna be capacity. That's why I was really wanting to test these super janky, clearly glued together 20 round magazines because if they do run that gives you a 20 round magazine capacity in a gun that's really affordable for most people as i said it we had a of malfunction course. see if we can fix it jinxed it So far, it doesn't slouch in the accuracy department for iron sights on a white target in the middle of the snow at about 85, 90 yards now we are. Very accurate. I mean, that's, consider 100 yards for a nine millimeter carbine. It's about the limit of your ballistic uh, capabilities anyway. People say 200, I can hit a target of 500 with a nine millimeter, that's great, but what's it gonna do when it gets there? You know, if you're running a nine millimeter carbine, I think most of the time, especially for hunting or self-defense, the effective range is about 100 yards. And for that, the accuracy at least is really effective. I'm not gonna knock it too much on reliability with the aftermarket mags. It would be nice if they ran, but uh, let's keep running it and just see what happens. I'm gonna get in his tracks here. I'm coming, I'm coming. I got the big feet so they're like snowshoes. She has gotta follow me. <laughs> Dang it. Getting snow up in my feet. All right, so we'll run these out here at 50 yards. I'm gonna try to shoot some of those smaller plates here now that I know what my hold is. And we'll just kind of see what kind of accuracy we can get. I'm obviously not gonna be laying prone and adjusting sights today. Well, why not? How well, about that? I mean, it's something smaller. Look at that dueling tree. Oh, we got one. We got one on the damn dueling tree. Well. Color me impressed. Yeah, I'm enjoying this little thing. No malfunction so far with uh, uh, the factory mags or at least the uh, the 10 round mags, so. Those are awfully hard to hit because they're white in the snow, but I'm happy with this so far. If you're wondering what the advantage of something like this would be over a pistol, uh, even with 10 round magazines, although you're extremely short capacity, even over modern day pistols like the Glock 19, which is a compact pistol that holds 15 rounds, if you get into a Glock 34, something like that with a couple extension base plates, you can run 33 round mags in your, in your, uh, in your nine millimeter pistol. But the advantage to this would be obviously the 16 inch barrel adds uh, gang of velocity and that's going to increase your hitting power that nine millimeter cartridge on top of that It's gonna look a little bit meaner, which is nice You're gonna have the ability to add a little bit better accessories, but mainly it's gonna be easier to shoot for most people uh, Including advanced shooters, but mainly newer shooters a rifle is just way more intuitively to shoot way more intuitive to shoot up close uh, and far away uh, if you're gonna be in a situation, you're gonna be very, very stressed. And taking a lot of the difficulty out of that as far as marksmanship is a big plus. If I was up close and personal with somebody, I would want the extra uh, velocity and I would want the extra ability to be accurate because even up close you can miss and you gotta make sure you hit that shot placement. 
and it's just way easier to do with more points of contact. And you got your shoulder, you got your cheek, you got your hand, and you have your support hand. And it's just way easier to fire a rifle than it is a handgun, even though it's a handgun caliber. All right, a couple downsides we found already that I kind of wanted to point out. Number one, length of pull is not as adjustable as something like an AR-15 or an AR-9, SIG MPX, something like that, but obviously you get more if you pay more. Another downside, especially the single stack magazine design and coming out of the pistol grip, is that it adds a lot of length to the gun. Uh, this 20 round single stack magazine is significantly lower and uh, more cumbersome than a 30 round mag would be on something like an AR-15. Another issue you're going to run into is probably long-term durability, I would well guess. I don't have a lot of experience with high points, but I've got a lot of experience with firearms as a whole, and I can tell you that the under 300, under 500 category, one of the things you lose is long-term durability uh, because of the quality of the parts that they use and the parts that they can afford to put in a cheaper gun, uh, especially in the internals, bolt carrier group, stuff like that. Overall though, it seems to be a pretty cool gun. We're gonna take it up close here, we're gonna shoot it a little bit, and then we'll have the wife shoot it and see what she thinks. I actually can't even reach that magazine release, which is kind of hilarious because I'm a fairly large human being. Uh, another issue that I ran into already is that the magazines are relatively difficult to load because you have to kind of curve them up in there as opposed to kind of a straight in uh, push for a uh, AR-15 or something like that. Not impossible, just kind of a different battery of arms, uh, similar to something like an AK where it's just a little bit different. You kind of have to click it in there and it gets stuck a little bit and then you just push it forward. What was that maneuver? This maneuver, <laughs> is that right? This is a PG show here, god damn it. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. As you can see, it's got some faults, but accuracy is not one of them. And that's with the iron sights, and I haven't adjusted them right out of the factory, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I was hoping it had like a, a, a flip-up aperture for uh, a, a more wider uh, close-up sight, but I think you're just going to have to get yourself like a Bushnell TRS-25 or something like that, which is a red dot coming in at about $100, and it would be a really good match for this, and that's probably what I'll run uh, for the remainder of the review. So you want to film me struggle? Yeah, well I was just thinking so that I would fine. be interesting to see somebody that's not so familiar with firearms try to operate uh, the high point from an empty status, I guess. So try are to gonna, load it. Are you going to tell me how to do it? Or am I just going to guess and look like an idiot? Well you take the, the thing full of bullets there and you put it in the bottom thing. Suck my nuts. <laughs> <sighs> try to make sure it's flush. You got to tap it a little bit. Make sure it's seated. Yep. Okay. And then hopefully you didn't... We'll see. We'll see if it I works. I wrapped it. Okay. I think. Well, we'll have to see. It's a little finicky. <laughs> <laughs> Tap and make sure the magazine is flush. Fun times. So should I rack this No. Nope. So tap okay. the magazine up in it, smack it hard, make sure it works, and then run the charging handle. There you go. Now run the charging handle. There you go. Okay. Now I, I bet it'll work. we're ready now, maybe. I don't ever shoot with iron sights, so... Yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult for you. This is why I thought this would be a whole new experience for not only you, but to More see... More of a yeah, well, red dot kind of gal. Sometimes but... I don't illuminate the ergonomic disadvantages of some guns because I've ran most guns. So, it you know, it's a little less intuitive than something like an AR-15 would be maybe. So it'd be interesting to see you just kind of play around with it. Okay. Well, we'll see. Magazine fell out. Are you kidding me? Nope. WTF? The issue, had to make sure the uh, magazine was flush and then I racked around in the chamber for you. So, what I really, okay, so I'm obviously not as experienced uh, with anything. Well, with guns for sure, yeah. But, um, I just, I feel like a total dipshit right now because you all just got to see me fail. But I just think it's so important to show that because how many of you would have gone out and bought this and maybe had a negative experience like this without someone like the outlaw to fix the issues that I just had right. and just decide that maybe this isn't for you or just buy it and then 
put it away in the closet because you had a negative experience. So Or not I, tried it in exactly. an emergency had that problem. Exactly. Which is a real issue. Which would have been super bad. Right. But That's why I always say train with your firearm. It's not because you don't know how to shoot, but you might not know the intricacies of what right. firearm that you have. Right. So you put two rounds down range and a mag falls out. Now you don't know what to do. Now you're up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Exactly. So I'm that willing to look like an paddle. idiot to showcase these things. <laughs> well, you don't look like an so, idiot. You just look like somebody who's never run a high point carbine before. True that. All right, shall I shoot it again? Yeah, give it a go. Hopefully it doesn't Hopefully fall the mag out doesn't again. fall out again. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you don't need to do anything, just pull the trigger. Mag did fall out again. What the? And I even did it that time. That's a little odd. Why don't we try a different magazine here? All right, so when you drop the magazine on the ground, that is what happened. That is not, un sorry, you're, you're you're moving and I'm not I know. the camera person you are. I don't want a cross uh, shot of so, me. Yeah, so that is, a common problem with cheaper magazines where they'd fall on the ground and, they, and they're and they no longer useful. So take this and we'll just work through this problem. We'll use a new mag, maybe it was the magazine. Uh, those mags I can't imagine are incredibly expensive to produce. So get it in there and make sure that damn thing's seated. Kind of take your hand and push up on it like that. There you go, yep, it's seated. Okay. And now run the charging handle and it got oh my stuck. God. All right, so we do have some problems. So a new issue that we ran into is that you were not pulling the charging handle far enough to the rear to uh, run the uh, round in that time because the charging handle is extremely difficult to pull to the rear. So uh, yeah, this is just stuff we're learning. This is really important for the people to watch because if they purchase this gun and they're not super into firearms, which I imagine is a lot of my audience, uh, and probably might have these anyone issues. who buys a $275 gun, to be honest, yeah. is probably not well, if you buy a $275 gun, it's usually going to be for fun or it's usually going to be for defense like any other person. But, yeah. you know, if, if it's for defense and you do have an issue, you have to know how to use it. So it's important to run through these. You know, if it's going to have problems, we've got to show them. Okay. You ready? Yep. Should I try it again? <sighs> All right. Now my arms are tired. <laughs> Fuck me. The magazine fell out again and I loaded that one. Okay. All right. So we're going to run one here. I think she's dropping the magazine. Uh, with her hand, so maybe it's not an issue of the gun, maybe just the operator. So I'm well, gonna try to run it here like real quick, it. and we'll see how we do. Yep. So I'm just hitting the release. You're just hitting that magazine release. That oh is. Oh my god! What a dope. Not the be not in the best spot, but hey, you know. These are it things happens. that you. I had an extended out. magazine release on my Glock 34 forever thinking that it would be really slick and really cool until one day I went to a training class and did rollover prone and I pushed the extended magazine release, dumped my magazine, and when I pulled my pistol I only had one round and I couldn't figure out why, it happens. So I'm not a dope. Well, not a little. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just figured it out completely. So she's shooting this rifle left-handed, I'm shooting it right-handed. And uh, when you shoot it left-handed, it's impossible to be ambi because your trigger finger runs right across the magazine release. Of course you're dumping the mag. Man, now I feel like a bit of a doofus. I, I always forget because you shoot pistols right-handed and shoot rifles left-handed like, yeah, so like a psycho. I don't but, know uh, why I do that. It's just no, how it's, I do whatever, it. However you feel. We'll load a mag now and try to shoot it without hitting the magazine release and give that a shot, I okay, guess. Okay, high pressure here. <laughs> so if you're left-handed, the high point 9mm carbine might not be the carbine for you. However, other than uh, user-induced <laughs> malfunctions, uh, it's actually been more reliable than the Springfield Saint, uh, which is something like four times the price. So you got to weigh that. Okay, well. Well, that's working. Ho holding it really stupid and missing. <laughs> well, at least, the, at least you still have ammo in the gun. All right. Wow. So not your favorite now, huh? Liked it when I shot it, not so much when you shot it. <laughs> I just don't see how I can make it. Yeah, I don't think you can. I think that's unusable for left-handed shooters. Left -handed. Yeah. Left-handed. All right. Well, after my terrible performance, let's get back to the start of the show. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is just shoot another mag real quick before we do our uh, uh, initial impressions here, just to make sure it's going to be reliable, nothing happens, stuff like that. And I figured it'd be nice to shoot a, uh, I don't know, just an up close drill, have a little fun. I mean, it shoots relatively quick. It does. I got to say, since I shoot right handed, I would not feel unarmed with this. I had low expectations. I did too. One thing that really gets me is that trigger reset, though. I have to really focus on pressing my trigger finger literally all the way to the trigger guard. But some intricacies aside, if this was your only firearm, you could get used to it for the most part, I feel like, and if you were right-handed, obviously. 
All right, so my initial impressions. For $275, it's an impressive gun, I have to admit. However, there are some issues. Uh, I'd like to start with, we had, did have one reliability issue, although they don't fault it too much. Probably does require a pretty decent break-in. It's running in the cold, which is nice. It's actually running with magazines filled with snow as well, which a lot of other guns don't. We actually had the Springfield Saint on here a while back, which was probably my least favorite gun of 2020. Uh, we do have it fixed, there will be an updated video, uh, but it did have a dismal performance, whereas this was much more reliable for considerably less. I hate the damn trigger guard. I keep having problems with rate of fire issues because I keep thinking I have the trigger reset and I don't. Part of that's because I'm not used to the gun, part of it's because the trigger guard is too small. My wife obviously had an issue with dumping the magazine. That was really funny. And it took us a while to figure out what that was. But uh, sometimes that happens. Hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, if you're left-handed, don't buy this gun. How about that? I don't <laughs> think you're gonna be able to avoid hitting that. It is like literally right in the way. Like if you have your trigger finger on the trigger and you pull the trigger, there's almost no way you're not gonna depress that magazine. Charging handle, the operation of gun feels a little cheesy. It's very accurate right out of the box. Uh, the magazines are a little cheesy as well. You only have a 10 round capacity. However, uh, overall, if you're comfortable with a 10 round 9 millimeter carbine and that's what you're looking for, you're looking to just have some fun, or you're looking for a gun that you can shoot with low recoil, low noise, maybe something you could suppress. I don't know why you'd want a $275 gun if you're gonna buy a suppressor because that's gonna be a $200 tax stamp. It's, it, the, no matter what, the suppressor's gonna be more than a gun. But regardless, uh, so far it's a cool little package. I'm gonna have some fun with this. We're definitely gonna shoot a thousand round review of this and uh, see how that goes. I'm gonna try it left-handed next time and uh, see what happens. But overall, so far so good. If you're right-handed, you're looking for a fairly cheap, fun gun, high point carbine, pretty good way to go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.